Today on our Ambassador Series, I'm joined by Australia's Ambassador to Croatia, Sue Cox. Sue, thank you for your time today. I'm delighted to be here. We opened the Australian Consulate in 1992 and then established the Embassy in 1999. How has Australia's relationship with Croatia evolved since then? Well, it's been a very interesting time. In 1992, we actually um, recognised uh, the Republic of Croatia after it broken away and declared independence from Yugoslavia. And that was quite interesting because we were the first country outside of um, the EU to do so. And uh, it reflects the close ties that exist between Croatia and Australia. We've since then followed an interesting track. We've supported them in the UN and more recently, in the last 10 years, we've supported their um, efforts towards joining the EU, which I'm glad to say that they joined in July 2013. And that's something that's very important to us because basically having a country like Croatia with a strong connection to Australia, primarily through the Croatians who came here and settled here, is good for our foreign policy goals in the EU. At the heart of our bilateral relationship are the personal links built by the large Croatian community. What is it about those bonds, do you think, that makes our relationship so unique? I think Croatian Australians are unique. Uh, and of course I can say that because I am the Australian ambassador to Croatia, so I've got a personal interest in this. But since I arrived in Croatia, it may surprise you to know that there are about 5,000 Australian Croatians living there. And while some have gone to retire, Others have gone because they want to build the links between Australia and Croatia. Uh, they chose to go after the war um, to help their other country of nationality. And it's interesting also within Australia that uh, you find Croats across the entire community. For example, Mile Jedna, the new um, Socceroos captain, is Croatian-Australian, as also was Mark Viduka, who was a Cro Croatian soccer player. But it's not only soccer. Matthew Pavlic, who's a well-known AFL player, is also Croatian-Australian. And it's also not limited to sport, although I must admit I seem to run into more Croats in sport than anything else. Um, but, uh, for example, Eric Banner the Hollywood actor, we claim him, but Croatia has a right to claim him too because he's also Croatian-Australian. So we have these interesting people, interesting characters. Uh, we, from time to time, they visit and from time to time, through our cultural relations program, uh, we work on promoting those linkages. And in fact, this year, 2014, I hosted Australia Day in Split. Uh, which is one of the coastal communities where many of the Australian Croatians originally migrated. And uh, they've been migrating since the 19th century too, so it's been a very long history of migration. How do you see our bilateral relationship growing and what are the best prospects for expansion? I mentioned previously that Croatia has now joined the EU, so although it's a relatively small country of only 4.2 million people, it's actually now access to a market of over 500 million through the EU membership. So now with our new economic diplomacy strategies, um, I'm very hopeful that with EU membership uh, it will bring certainty for businesses in Australia in dealing with Croatia. In the past there were sometimes uncertainties, it was a small market, um, and now EU brings certainty. It brings a better sort of legal and um, regulatory framework through which investors and business people can deal. And um, I'm very much looking forward to pursuing that. What would you like to have achieved by the time your term as head of mission comes to an end? I think like all heads of mission, we want to do things to improve relations between our country, Australia, um, and uh, the country in which we serve, in this case Croatia. For me it's great because I see a lot of positives. Um, I mentioned previously that there's business. Uh, Croatia's opening up its oil and gas sector. So in fact I'll be going to Perth and I'll be talking to some businesses in Perth that have got an interest in perhaps bidding for some of the concessions that will come online. And um, it's, I hope, to see um, the commercial relationship grow between Australia and Croatia. What's it like living and working in Croatia and what advice would you have for Australians who may be tempted to visit? 
Croatia is absolutely beautiful. I live in Zagreb and Zagreb has a lot in common with Canberra. It's about four hours from the coast and um, being an in, inland city it's interesting and it's full of history because it's the capital and I enjoy working there. It's a city of about a million people. It's absolutely beautiful walking the streets of um, medieval towns and the food and um, doing work with them is fantastic. As I said, we have quite a large um, diaspora in Croatia and uh, it's fun doing the cultural events that we do out and about. We have things like Australia Days in the zoo and all my staff go to the zoo and we do all sorts of things around um, Australia but it worries me sometimes when most people seem to know more about our deadly and dangerous creatures than they do about other aspects of Australia. Um, I know that it's becoming increasingly popular amongst tourists. For example, 10 years ago there were about 10,000 Australians visited. Last year 106,000 visited. And I do have some advice for them. Croatia is beautiful and it's full of very interesting things to do, but do beware. Um, if you are not into cliff jumping or climbing cliffs or doing things, just remember sometimes that um, your insurance doesn't always cover you if you uh, engage in risky activities. So with that piece of advice, I'd like to say come and enjoy and see everything that Croatia has to offer. Just like Australia, it's got a beach culture, um, but always beware. Ambassador, thank you for your time today. Thank you very much, Gemma, thank you. And that was Australia's ambassador to Croatia, Sue Cox, for our ambassador series.